So, um, like was mentioned, this talk is about self-esteem, which I think is a word that gets tossed around a lot and we hear a lot about, but I found a lot last year in the student retreats and just a lot in general, we don't know exactly what that word means. Um, what exactly are we talking about with self-esteem? What do we mean when we say my self-esteem is low or my self-esteem is high or anything like that? Um, so I want to kind of break it down, explain what that word actually means. I'm going to break it down into two different categories. Um, so the first category, there are two parts that make up self-esteem. The first part is self-image, how you see yourself, who you are. Um, that can be split up a couple ways. That can be like your, your physical reputation, what you, what you look like, your physical appearance, which might be um, you know, how you see yourself in the mirror, like you look at yourself in the mirror and say, I look good today, or I am tall, I am fat, I am, I have blue eyes, whatever. That can be your self-image, how you see yourself. Or it can be how other people affirm you or how other people tell you you look. You know, people say, you look good today, you are tall. Hopefully people don't say you are fat right <laughs> in your face or anything like that. But it can be a mix of how you see yourself and often I think for most people a lot of it is based on how you are affirmed or what you are told by other people. So part of it is what you actually look like on the outside. Another part of it is kind of how you define yourself. What kind of titles you give to yourself. Like I am an athlete. I am a student. I am a Christian. I am an artist. I am a performer. Give these kind of titles to ourselves is how we see ourselves. That is kind of a definition or a label that we give ourselves or something that other people give us. You know, you are an athlete, you are a singer, you are a, you know, so on and so forth. Or it can be things like, I am the funny person, I am the smart person, I am the friendly person. Or how other people see you is like, they're the smart person, they're the funny person, they're the friendly person. Things like that. They're all different ways to kind of create a definition of ourselves that we might create for ourselves or is created by other people, but different ways to define ourselves and structure who we are. Um, that can be positive, it can be negative. So it depends kind of on your perception. Um, you might think, I'm tall and I like that. That's positive self-image. You might think, I'm tall and I wish I wasn't that tall, and that would be kind of negative self-image, but it goes both ways for that. The second part is self-efficacy which is your belief in your ability to succeed, what you do. Um, so this could be very particular, certain things, like I am very good at sports. I really believe that when I go out onto the field that I'm going to play hard, I'm going to compete, and I'm going to score. You have that belief in yourself to succeed. Or it could be, you know, I am really good at math. I go into the classroom, I have a test, and I'm really confident in myself my ability to do these problems and succeed at this test. Or it could be, you know, low on the other end, where your particular self-efficacy for a situation is you go into a situation and say, I really don't think I'm prepared for this, I don't think I'm able to do this um, in a particular sense. Or it could be in a very general sense, like just in general, not a super confident person, you don't believe you're very able. Or you could believe you're very able, you could be a very confident person in in most situations you go into, you say, I, I believe in myself to do this. It could go both ways. You have high self-efficacy or low self-efficacy in the same way. Um, so we combine those two, the self-image and the self-efficacy, and that creates your self-esteem. Self-esteem is who you are, your self-image, and what you do, your self-efficacy, that who you are and what you do has some value. Now, who you are and what you do is important, has some worth, is of some good. Your self-esteem is how you perceive those things about you are valuable. So that is, that is what self-esteem is. And we might, we might know that, you know, we, we have that definition now, but your self-esteem is low. You might have high self-esteem, you might have low self-esteem. Say you are in the low category. <laughs> You don't perceive yourself to be as valuable. You don't perceive um, your, how you, who you are as worthy. You don't perceive 
the things that you do or how able you are as super able or super valuable, here's the important thing to understand. Because you are here, because you were created, you are valuable. Because you exist, because you are here, you are valuable. Let's think about our God for a second. The God that we believe in. Do we think that our God, the creator of the universe, would create something just for the heck of it? Just to say, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put that there. I don't think that's how we see our God. I think we see our God as an intellect, a divine intellect, who does things for a reason, who does things for a purpose. And just look around you at the trees, the sky, the sun, you know, look at the world, mountains, you know, beautiful sun, moon, stars, everything in this world is so amazing. There are so many amazing things, and there is you. Every single one of you is here as well. And God thought all of these things could be even better, even more valuable, this world that there is because of you. And every single one of you, because you exist, because you are here, <coughs> It means that you have value. There's inherent value in your existence. You are made for a purpose. You are made worthy and you are made valuable. Now, if we can understand that, that you have value just by your existence. If you have value, everything you do has value. Every Everything you do has value. If you are valuable, everything you do is valuable. The big things, every single one of you in this room is gifted in some way. Every single person has some kind of talent, some kind of gift, something that you do well. You might not even see it, you might not even acknowledge it, but you do something well. There's something about you that is special and unique. But on top of that, on top of the wonderful things that you're made for, on top of the wonderful gifts that you have, even the little things matter. Talking about our theme this weekend, a dream small. Even the little things, every single little thing that you do has value. Everything. Examples. Saying hi to someone. Something as small as saying hi to someone. That might have just changed their day. You know, you have no idea what someone might be going through. If you say hi to someone, that might change the entire course of their day, they might be happier, they might be more joyful, they might be more able to take on the day just because you said hi to them, and that might create a chain of positive reactions flowing from you just saying hi to someone. Something as small as that could change someone's day, could change someone else's day, to change the world. Just that small action. Eating breakfast. You all ate breakfast today. If you didn't eat breakfast today, you probably wouldn't feel as good. You probably would be low energy, you might not be as, as joyful, as energetic. If you don't eat breakfast, maybe you don't have the energy to say hi to someone, or to do something kind for someone, or to give what you should be able to give to the people around you. If you decide to eat breakfast, you have that energy. Maybe you're more joyful, you're able to positively impact someone who can positively impact someone else, and positively impact someone else, and there's just this chain, even just that decision to eat breakfast in the morning. Something as small as that has the ability to make that wave of change. Stepping around a puddle. If there's a puddle in the road, and you do not step in the puddle, say you step in the puddle, you don't see a puddle, you step in the puddle, that might ruin your entire day. That might, you know, that might put you down, and that might prevent you from being able to maybe Five minutes later, ten minutes later, an hour later, there's an opportunity for you to positively impact someone else, but you stepped in a puddle. So you don't have the ability to positively impact someone else. If you acknowledge that there's a puddle there and you step around it, that could change your entire day and that could change someone else's entire day and that could change so many people's day just because you stepped around the puddle. The little things matter. Every single thing that you do matters. Everything is valuable. And I think... That another thing to add is that looking at those bigger things, looking at 
on a, on a bigger scale what your gifts are, what your talents are. Even still, I think there's this understanding a lot of people have that their gift is less worthy than someone else's gift. Your gift might be worthy, like, like I just said, everyone's gift is worthy, but you might be thinking, you know, for example, uh, a doctor is more valuable than a garbage man. I feel like a lot of that might be generally understood. Uh, uh, you know, you might be thinking, I wish I was the, the popular kid in school and I'm, I'm down here. I'm really good at math. I'm, I'm like a really talented musician, but you know, like the, the athletes, like the whole high school thing, like the athletes are like up here and like, I'm really good at math. And you might think, yeah, that, that, that's less, less worthy. There's like this hierarchy of worth that we create, like subconsciously, but everyone, everyone kind of does it. Like my gift, my thing is less worthy than someone else's thing. And I'm gonna, I want to give you this kind of metaphor of a clock, okay? If, if everyone is one aspect of a clock, if you have to choose what aspect of a clock that you would be to be the most valuable, what would you pick? I think most people are going for the hands, right? The two big hands that move around, they're super cool. You know, they're the biggest things on the clock. They move around, do cool things. Like, everyone's looking at the hands. So, of course, you want to be the hands. Obviously, they stick out from the clock. Like, they're, they're the cool guys. Like, the two hands. Who doesn't want to be the two hands? I mean, even the, the little, like, second ticker. Like, even the small second hand. Like, that one moves around. That one, like, does cool things. People look at the second ticker. That one sticks out from the clock a little bit. That one's pretty cool. I want to be the second ticker. If I can't be the hands, maybe the second ticker. Okay, if I can't be the hands or the second ticker, uh, maybe the numbers. No, at least the numbers. The numbers are important. People look at the numbers. Right? Everyone, like, you, you know what, what time it is. You... You look at the, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Um, like the, the numbers are cool. They're big. They stick out a little bit. The numbers, numbers are important, right? What about the little ticks on the outside? I'm talking like those, those, those old clocks that have like the hands and the, and the numbers and the ticks on the, out, on the outside. What about the little ticks? Because there's like, what, 120 of those? There's so many of those. There's little ticks on the outside. And there's so many of them, like you just, you just want the ticks. Right? How important are those? If you know exactly what time it is, those ticks are the most valuable piece of the clock. If you know the exact second, what the exact time is, you need the ticks. You need the little second ticks around the outside. Those are the most valuable pieces. You might be one of many, but you're one second, you're one moment in time. And you are so important. Someone needs to know exactly what time it is, you are the most important part of the clock. And you might seem like you're just one of many. You might seem like you're lowly, but you're so valuable. Every single piece of the clock, every single person has value, and everyone plays their part. And, you know, even biblically, if we, if we look at it, God uses the seemingly less worthy. God uses the people who are, like, lower in society, shepherds, uh, carpenters, fishermen. Those aren't, like, the big guys. Those aren't like the scholars, the scribes. God's using shepherds, fishermen, carpenters, people who are generally lowly in society to do great things. Because God doesn't see your perceived greatness. God sees your greatness. Because everyone is worthy, everyone is valuable. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 through 31 says, Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many are noble of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something. So that no human being might boast before God. So that as, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. Because we're all made valuable. And God doesn't see that hierarchy of worth, a hierarchy of value. Everyone is valuable. If you're down here, you're made to be up here because everyone is on the same level. Because our ultimate goal, what we're all here for, what we're all made valuable to, for a purpose for, our main goal, every single one of us, is to become a saint. Every single person is on the same path, different paths from the same destination. 
to become a saint. That's what we're here for. And the beautiful thing is, as worthy, as valuable, or not worthy, or not valuable as you might perceive yourself to be, every single one of you is made to be a saint. Every single person was created and put here to make a difference in this world and strive to be a saint. And we're all on that path. Every single one of you is worthy and valuable and made to make a difference and made to be a saint.